All right, guys. I shot my garden tour. And that was on, that was after the last night we had stayed here. That was two days ago. We spent the last two days finishing, just packing everything in the house, getting everything cleaned up. The pods are gone. The U-Haul is gone. And I wanted to just kind of give you guys an update. It's gonna make your head spin. These logistics are bonkers, but they're gonna work. I went to my dear friend Nora and got my hair changed. New season, new do. <laughs> Our friends, the Vincens came over and visited us, actually took a clip from that little visit, and I'm gonna put it in here. So, our last day, really, I don't know, I'll probably be back out here tomorrow, finishing yeah. packing stuff up. And we've had a lot of dear friends Aww. coming by <laughs> to say goodbye to us, which is definitely hard and emotional. And uh, Andrea here, her and Ben here <laughs> from BW Family Farm. You see he's got the shirt and the camera making a video of it. They just came by to say bye to us. Uh, they have been dear friends of ours. Many of you guys know them from co-hosting the Shindig with us a couple years ago. And of course we call them our farm mom and dad because they have been uh, such great mentors to us and teaching us about farming things. And they actually brought me a gift, a goodbye gift of meat. What an appropriate yeah. gift from your farm mom and dad. Yeah, I know. For the road. <laughs> That's what moms do, you know. So they, this is from their online store. So they sell meat from their farm, pastured meat. Which is so cool, and I so appreciate this. This will go in our freezer, and we'll oh, yeah. eat on this this next handful of days before yep. we go. And I wanted Andrea to tell you a little bit about this service that they offer, because a lot of you I know are here local in central Arkansas, mm -hmm. and you might be looking for a source for something like this, or you might not be local. You might be in many other places, yeah. like lower 48 yeah. <laughs> states. So will you tell them about it? Sure. So we just started raising our own meat back in 2012 actually and then uh, we just transitioned into selling like holes and halves of like beef and pork and we still do that that's all on our website too but there's a lot of people that just don't have the space for that so yep. we started selling just by the pound yep. this past year so if you're local you can go to our website vwfamilyfarm.com and it'll take you to our store and we deliver right to your house or I can meet you somewhere there's all kinds of options on there for buying by the pound if you're not local just look on the store for stuff that says shippable shippable boxes of chicken and pork and all that we've got chicken and pork right now we'll have beef in september and we've got like 60 turkeys we're raising as well so we have turkey i think in september as well so awesome and i put my phone number even on the website <laughs> i'm trying to help you guys out if you have trouble i'd love to just help you so you can even just call me awesome um, so one thing i would just say is we go through a service called barn to door and on the first page of our store on the left hand side it'll want you to put your zip code in don't put that in because it confuses a lot of people and it brings up this message that says we can't deliver to you so just add stuff to your cart and then put your address in at the end but again just call me if you need help yep so yeah they ship all over the lower 48 states so if you're wanting I always talk about turning your waiting room into a classroom and if you're wanting to make a change in how you consume things now and you want to be maybe someday raising pastured meat or if you know that's not something that you're gonna be able to do and you want to support people who do that here's an opportunity so y'all can check them out the last couple of days has been a lot of that it's been a lot of last appointments last visits as residents here of course we'll see these people again we still have family here and we'll still be back visiting we've just been tying up loose ends and getting ready for our family to primarily shift now we'll still be handling stuff here but from there now there's one more last thing that i have to do before i turn the camera off on the last vlog i will ever shoot here with this being my place when we leave here I'm, I'm sure that i'll come back and visit some of our best friends that are moving into this house and i'll see this farm again both on youtube on their youtube channel whispering willow farm as well as in real life whenever we come and visit but i've shot my last garden tour we're not even gonna go out there in this video that was me kind of closing that chapter but on this last vlog while i make your head spin with logistics i'm gonna make my last tomato sandwich out of my first big garden. And this is gonna be not quite as good as usual because 
Um, I don't have a toaster. I've got the oven. I suppose I could I could toast this in the oven. Um, I don't have any like homemade components. I don't have any homemade bread or homemade mayo. And I don't have any way to heat up. I've got a couple slices of bacon I saved in the fridge and I don't have any way to heat it up, but it's okay. I think that a cold untoasted tomato sandwich in your empty old kitchen is better than no tomato sandwich at all. The fridge is almost entirely empty, but important parts. <laughs> I don't even have a knife. <laughs> We're just gonna get in here. Oh, I don't have a knife. How am I supposed to cut these tomatoes? Maya, I don't have a knife. I'm literally spreading this mayo together. This is a desperate times call for desperate measures, y'all. I found my garden knife. I just washed it off really good. It's a little bit rusty looking, but it's clean. Y'all don't judge me, I'm not making you eat this. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, let's talk logistics. But first, let me tell you. I don't have a yellow tomato. I looked and there's not one ready. But I do have like a dark. This is, it. I don't know if you can tell how dark it is. This is a Paul Robeson. One of my faves. And then this is a, hold on, let me think about where I picked this off of. This is a Grand Marshal. Came out of the high tunnel. Um, this is a F1 hybrid that... I grew out there this year and what makes them cool is that they will still set fruit when it's hot outside. So if you have a problem with your tomatoes, this knife is gonna do the job, but it's not gonna look pretty doing it. Um, if you have a problem with your tomatoes dropping their blossoms in the summer when it's hot, it's because tomato plants do that when it's over mm, 85 Fahrenheit, what is that, like 28 Celsius um, to like 90 Fahrenheit, 32 Celsius. And they'll start dropping their blossoms when it's that hot. And that stinks because if you don't have any blossoms setting fruit, you don't have any tomatoes. And the cool thing about the Grand Marshal is it's an F1 hybrid and the seeds are expensive. I bought them from Johnny's and Jill had told me about it because she'd grown them in a high tunnel last year. But I really like that variety and I plan on growing it again in the future because um, it has a lot of really nice uniform big old fruits and it's actually still setting them now whenever it's like 95 outside. It's very warm. This knife is struggling, but I'm not struggling. <laughs> I'm so tired. I'm so done. But, um, I will grow the Grand Marshal again. I, it's, I, I've been really impressed with it because the flavor is still good. I've eaten a few of them now and for a hot house tomato, I would say it holds its own with the ones that are out in the, um, in the garden. It's not as good. It's not as good as the big heirlooms, but it is, it has flavor. It has good texture, it has good acid. And that is definitely a good thing. All right. So the way I like to make tomato sandwiches, if you've never been here for this, beautiful process. Normally I toast the bread, but here we are. And I used to do it where I would just get a big old fast slice of tomato and I'd put it on toasted bread. Normally I would make homemade mayo. Can't do that right now. But I recently, last year, I started doing this a little bit differently. And I can only do this if there's someone else to share the tomatoes with me. Uh, because obviously you're probably not going to cut into three tomatoes to make one sandwich because you just wouldn't use all of them. But I like to take a couple of different varieties of tomatoes and slice them really thin and lay them out instead of doing one big chunk of tomato because I think this just gives it more flavor. And I really like it when you can do like a bright red one and a yellow one and a like dark dusky red or purpley one. I've got my slices of tomatoes. I left out the box of salt because I wanted to make this sandwich. Get some good salt on here. Normally I'll do, I have like a gray Celtic salt that's packed and then this Molden, Molden's sea salt flakes. And it's just really good because it adds some texture. These are like these big, pretty flakes. And that's it. Um, and you can add bacon. Obviously, you add bacon and lettuce, you got a BLT and not just a tomato sandwich. Or you can just do bacon and tomato. 
Um, I love lettuce and I love salads, but I don't like lettuce on sandwiches. It's just like a weird thing. I don't like, I don't like to bite my sandwich and something uh, comes out with the bite. So I don't put lettuce on sandwiches usually. This is actually the last pack of bacon we had left from um, the, the last hogs we did here. So here's my tomato sandwich. I just didn't talk logistic at all. I just talked about the tomatoes. <laughs> so I'm gonna eat this and then tell you the logistics of my move. All right. Now I can leave happy. <laughs> I was already happy. Now I'm extra happy. Now that I got my last tomato sandwich here. You wanna come talk logistics with me? I'll grab a, the stool. Sweet Maya has decided to join me to talk about logistics. My favorite thing. Oh, okay. So here's the deal. We really wanna keep you guys in the loop about this. Wait, it's, this is not a loop. This is like a toddler's squiggly line. <laughs> I think that we have nailed it down pretty South well. Carolina. And I, <laughs> I'm really proud of how we figured it out. I'm not saying we didn't figure it out. Listen, whenever your, your two-year-old toddler draws a squiggly line, you're just like, oh, it's so cute. It's kind of like how we feel. Okay. <laughs> So, right, no, listen, you guys will know what I'm feeling right now, what I mean when we get about this. All right. Now, what, what so, we're doing. I want to explain this to you guys because a lot of people are saying, like, I can't wrap my head around the logistics of this move. A lot of people are saying, I feel like this may be unrealistic for like, you know, everybody that this might not be something that's like obtainable. But then we're also hearing from a lot of people who are like, oh, I've done this. I've moved my farm. I've moved my family. I've, I've done a massive move like you're moving and it's crazy, but you can do it. And so I'm going to lay this out for you guys so you can get a realistic view of what this looks like. And what I'm telling you we're doing is about our limit as far as capacity goes. Right now, like I'm, I'm laughing and I'm joking. I'm done. Like I am so done with these logistics, but we still got a lot to do. So I'm not actually done. I'm just like, you know, look at the bright side, get through it. But getting over this particular part will make it yes. feel a lot easier. This, this weekend is particularly hard because there's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of goodbye. Our kids are having a lot of emotion. Um, and I think once we, we have our kids relocated, our animals relocated, finishing up all of the traveling and all of that stuff and all the stuff, I think will actually be a lot easier. It's right now where everybody's uncomfortable, everybody feels displaced, that there's just a lot of emotion. And as a parent, that's hard. And just as an individual, it's hard. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who might not have the backstory here, I'm going to give the Cliffs notes. We bought 27 acres of raw land in the Midlands of South Carolina, and we are moving our farm from Arkansas and our family from Arkansas to South Carolina. We fell in love with the area. We felt really called to that area. Um, we have had such an overwhelming amount of support from family and friends, and we just really feel like this is where we are being positioned in our life. In April, we went out to our new land and visited it, and we made a video announcing that we had bought it and we shared it with you guys. And shortly after that, Jeremiah made another trip back out there, the first trip back out there, where he took a trailer load of stuff. We have befriended our neighbors and they've been extremely helpful in letting us keep things in their, on their property where they'd be safe. Um, they have allowed us to hook up our RV there, which has been really nice because it's kept us close to our land with the benefit of having power and air conditioning in our RV. Mm -hmm. um, and in the, in the last four months, Jeremiah has spent more time there over the last two months than he has been here. He's been there, he's made seventy five percent of the yeah, time. I've spent multiple trips there. back there and that's been somewhat evident on our channel, but we did not want to like super advertise how much he was gone because I was here by myself. Um, and just for security purposes we didn't want to share that. But he's been there setting up fences, clearing the property, cleaning it up, getting the utility set up. We now have a water. functioning well, so we have water. We have power on our property. We did hook up to the grid for power. Eventually we plan on doing solar or something, but right now it's just a matter of getting out there. The septic tank is scheduled, but there's been got some weather there. Rain, so it should be starting beginning of this next week. Right. We have bought a double wide mobile home that has been delivered. We talked to them today and we, cause we were concerned maybe the rain would be delaying things, but they told us that we, we would be in our home by August 5th, which is really great. We have hired 
the pod services to move some of our, our things, like the most important things to unlock, unload. Those have already left here. So most of our stuff is gone. That's why we're not able to stay in our house. We don't have beds or anything to cook in the kitchen or any of that. So that brings us current to so that, right now. Yeah, that most of us. left. The property is for the most part prepared for us to get out there and finish it. We can move our animals. Yes, I did not get as much done as I was trying to, but I got enough done to make the move. Right. We got a barn repaired and fences, enough fences put up that we can get there and quickly get the rest up. Mm-hmm. So we have on this farm had an employee named Ben who has worked with us part time over the last couple of years. He started interning here. You've probably called him Ben Turn. We did an interview with him. I'll put a link down below that kind of talks about his plans for the future. He's not moving with us. He has family here and he plans on staying here, but he is working for us right up until the point that we leave. And he's been extremely helpful in helping us get moved, especially while Jeremiah was gone and I was still shooting content, taking care of all of our kids and packing our house. He's been here helping me with the farm. So Ben Turn has still been here. Jeremiah's sister, Michaela, she works for us. She runs the shipping and all of that for our sticker store. So if you buy anything off rootsandrefuge.com, Michaela is primarily the person that handles getting those orders out. She's been helping us pack. She is moving with us. She's already got an apartment lined up out there and she's gonna be coming out and because we were not going to be having Ben turn and because Jeremiah's youngest brother, Noah, which the dynamic of that is kind of different. Noah moved in with us when he was 14. He's kind of like a bonus son to us. That's kind of the role that he has in our life. And we were able in this transition to offer a job to Noah. In the past, he's expressed a desire to work with us. Um, he, the, the vision and the dream that we have is very dear to his heart because he's been here since it was just a, like a twinkle in our eye. Prior to this, he is grown, has a wife, he has a lot of responsibilities, and prior to now, we were not in a position to be able to offer him what he needed to work with us. And so, in this transition, we were able to offer Noah a job, which is amazing, and that is enabling them to move as well. So Noah and Maddie are moving. They actually bought their first house. They closed on it this week, which we're so proud of them. It's so sweet. Yeah, so they they're... actually got to South Carolina before we did. They did. They ended up in South Carolina before us. So they left here a couple days ago with a U-Haul, with their whole household worth of stuff. They've been living next door. He's actually flipping that house to sell it. He's gonna be working on that. He's gonna continue to work on that. But right now they got out there and they took some of our stuff with them. <laughs> then our pods left. And we still have a lot of stuff. Like we have, I mean two pods does not hold a household this big for this, this much many people. Hmm. And then we still have all of the things like garden decor and pots and like all of the chairs and just all the different things that are all over the farm our deep freezers and everything. The deal is that technically for the next month, this is still our house. Our dear friends are buying it. So we are consolidating all of our things down to the garage to get out of their way so they can get in and start making renovations and moving their stuff in. Um, that is one of the great benefits of this deal being among very close friends. Um, because there's no rigid deadlines on that. So that's yep. really nice. Um, it's nice for them to be able to go ahead and come in early. It's nice for us to know that we've got time to finish getting our stuff out of the garage and it's safe and it's not in anybody's way and nobody's upset about it. So really, really, really thankful that we're working this deal out among friends. So the next step, so that's where we are right now. That's all the logistics that have come up to right now. So when I reference people, you'll know what is going on <sighs> okay so i just need to drink my kombucha <laughs> carry is on kombucha kombucha i wish it's making me calm i feel pretty calm i mean not really i feel a little tight in the chest but <laughs> yeah, yeah it's real calm let me tell you you're a cool cat when it comes to calmness i think i've handled this very well i applaud you i applaud you too oh good we're applauding each other don't spit <laughs> <the cow. laughs> Okay. Gross. Okay. <laughs> so today, so tomorrow is the book signing. The book signing at Brother Sunny. Saying Which, by the time friends. you guys see this, you will, that will already have happened. But it's just to give you understanding of what we're doing. Book signing tomorrow. Sunday is actually chill day. Monday's a chill day, and then it gets crazy. I don't 
don't know that I would call those days chill days. Okay, well, are they we less? We have a lot of kids, and we're in my busy? dad's. <laughs> they are less busy. By tonight. Okay, listen, when you wrap right at this level, this is a chill day. <laughs> That's for me. I'm calling it vacation. So we're doing the book signing by this evening i mean this what you're seeing in the living room here that's all the rest of our stuff that we have to consolidate down to the garage mm -hmm. um and we'll be out of the main part of the house except for a little bit up here in the living room but we'll get to that okay tuesday tuesday you are departing i'm departing With early in the children. morning tuesday i will be loading up five beautiful boys well-behaved young men who respected their mother on a very long Are you road speaking trips life? and who helped me instead of begging me for food they know i won't let them have a gas station <laughs> so that is what they are <laughs> and i am loading them all up we just made this trip back with all the kids and malia was still with us a couple weeks ago a week and a half ago and i'm loading my kids up and we are departing tuesday morning pretty early and we are driving all the way to South Carolina. I had given them the option to leave the day before, drive halfway and stop at a hotel and like take it easier, but they told us they would rather have the extra day at grandpa's and, and make the trip in one day. They like doing that better. Yeah. So I was like, cool, I'm good with so, that. So Tuesday evening, me, Noah, and our friend Tom. Who owns Murray McMurray, Murray McMurray Hatchery. Hatchery. He's coming down on Monday. I didn't give that background. Jeremiah and Tom have become pretty good friends. And so well, they it's like, not like a random thing. Nobody yeah, drives like, down from Iowa to Arkansas yeah, like, to then drive from Arkansas to South Carolina <laughs> if you're not friends. But I don't we know kind if they of, know. kind like, of have a real tense relationship. But he's like, hey, <laughs> I let me drive they, for four days straight. I don't straight. know if they know that. Like, I don't know. Because Tom and his family have like come and visited us here at our farm. But I can't remember if we made a video about that. And like... They like Most hit it off I call when they Tom first. Not to order chickens, but just to talk. Yeah, so like they actually, have, they actually have. We, we're friends. So anyway, backstory. I'm trying to make sure everybody understands. Okay, I understand. The Me and Tom are friends. <laughs> Tom's coming down with a truck and a trailer, a stock trailer, and we'll have two stock trailers. So I'm bringing a stock trailer, my truck. He's got a stock trailer, his truck, and then we've got our utility trailer. So Tom's taking all the goats. We'll have two different... And the alpacas. And the alpacas. But the alpacas can ride with the female goats. Yes. So we'll have to put all the females up front in like the first three quarters of the trailer and then the three males at the back because it'll be the lightest. Okay. Then my trailer will have all the pigs. It's boys and girls, but the boys that we're taking are... Cut. Cut. So there's it's all basically feeder pigs and mamas, and they're all just going to go in my stock trailer and have access to the whole thing. And they're all together right now. We've already put them all in the same They've been there for pen a month. so that they could be acclimated yeah, to each other. They're all so acclimated so there won't be any fighting or anything no like drama. that. Well, no Gerard, drama. No drama. No this. drama. <laughs> Gerard is actually not going with us. He's moving to the Vincent's farm um, to service their Mangalitsa mama and to make more Mangalitsas for their Arkansas area. We are deciding to stop breeding Mangalitsas for the time being because we have so many on hoof. We are taking two of our mamas currently bred. So we'll have babies there. And that, because we just use those pigs for charcuterie, that gives us enough of those for like the next handful of years. And after that, if we want to get back into breeding them, we'll look for more stock. Right. So then we have the utility trailer and the plan for that is we're going to uh, put all the chickens in the chick shaw and load it sideways so that there's no direct airflow through them and they'll be able to just roost in the chick shaw and travel sleeping like they normally would. And that'll be locked down where they They'll can't be locked get down out. where they can't get out, the door will be shut, all that stuff. Strapped down, it's not going to jump around. Then we've got to load the dragon wagon behind that, which nothing will be staying in it, but we've got to get it to South Carolina. I want to keep it. I love that little thing. So we're keeping that. For the rest of the fowl that we're taking, we, they will travel in crates and cages in the beds of the trucks. And th so that's all the animals. That's everyone. That's one trip. We're we leaving at night. We only have one beehive left. I've had a lot of people ask this that might have missed. Uh, most of our beehives... Half of them absconded after they sprayed on the street. Yeah. Okay. Then we had the freak winter storm and that took out everyone except one. Mm -hmm. And then the one has bounced back this spring. They're thriving. Mm -hmm. I've seen them bearding and things, things like that. Ben turns keeping but them. But Ben turns moving them to basically be next to the other hives that he captured from here anyway. Right. So. We've been we've given Ben turns swarms from here, and so he's just taking that those and keeping those bees. We're not going to try to move any bees. Yeah, we'll just get we'll start new once we have time and we get a place set up. So they're going to drive through the night, which is not great for the drivers, but they're... It's best for the animals. It's best for the animals. Heat. 
um, because the heat and the risk of traffic because they're going to be in those trailers they can sleep through the night in the trailers and they will be fine obviously they'll have to stop and give them water when they fill up whenever they do um, gas and all of that stuff but they can get through the night so it's 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 pretty solid fast moving the only issue is is if we went in the day we have to go through atlanta and if you go 40 you have to go through nashville so you're looking at two cities atlanta there's almost always traffic if you're going through daytime hours it, during the week and so going at night is going to avoid the likelihood of getting stuck sitting on the highway in august with animals and trailers um and so that is going to be rough like an all-nighter and we're so appreciative of tom and of noah being willing to do that and then so they're going to be getting to uh south carolina in the morning and i'll already be there i will have arrived the evening before and we'll get the animals unloaded where they're going to get and then the guys are probably going to sleep and that we're going to take a couple of days just recovering um them recovering from the trip and then jeremiah is going to i mean i think tom's wanting to see the area and everything and see the farm and all of that but then i'm going to spend that few days getting my kids situated and doing stuff like getting ready for school stuff. getting ready for school so at that point we have this almost two week period between when we get there i guess it's not even fully two weeks it's, it's like less than two weeks it's like 10 or 11 days where we're getting there and we're in our camper waiting for our house to be ready for a few of those days the beginning of august we're going to go up and stay and our, our friends uh the roads have a cabin and we're going to go stay up there and spend some time with them um hopefully be a helping hand to them and also pick their brains on some things that we're getting ready to set up at our farm and just spend some time not being in our camper and not having a million things to do so that's gonna be really nice yeah and when we come back from that our house should be ready and set up now at that point as soon as our house is ready I'm going to be making a trip back to Arkansas with Jackson, my oldest son. And in the meantime, from when we leave this week and then Jeremiah's sister, Michaela, is going to stay here. Our pets are still going to be here with Michaela. She's going to be running our sticker business, taking care of our pets, our cats, Con and Bear, as well as Jackson's lizard Newt. We cannot load them up and take them right now because we don't have anywhere to put all of them. Um, if we were to put them, if we were to take them, the camper, obviously they can't all fit inside the camper and our dogs are not accustomed to spending a lot of time outside. And so going to a place that's even hotter than here during the hottest time, I don't feel okay about just putting a pen outside and putting them in it because like Great Danes are subject to bloat and heart issues and all that. I just, I don't think that it would be safe for them. So Michaela's offered to stay here, run the sticker business during that time and take care of our pets so they can be in the air conditioning. Is your head hurting yet? Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to drive back here. We are going to take my car that I drive back as well as Michaela needs to take our other sister's car she's been with her husband stationed stationed in italy and her car has been here we we're keeping it up and we've got to take that to south carolina so we are caravanning jackson and myself and michaela with our three cats two large dogs and bearded dragon on that trip once we have a house to put them in so we'll make that trip back the kids are starting school and we are getting into the groove hopefully at that point and i will have to make one more trip back here at the end of August, and Noah and I are going to be getting a big U-Haul and loading up everything that's left in here the yeah. in the garage um, and loading that up with our deep freezers, our freeze dryer, our incubators, like all of the stuff that we do not have a place for yet until we get our house set up and a little storage building that we bought set up. And we're gonna get it loaded into the U-Haul and I'm gonna make one trip back with the last vehicle that we have to transport as well as that, as well as the U-Haul. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna have a car hauler on the back. We have this old farm truck that we've had forever with hopes to restore it and we're gonna take that. Mm -hmm. So that's it. One detail that I didn't plug in there is that while we're at the roads, we will have family at our house taking care of our animals. So they will be taken care of. We've thought of the details here. Mm -hmm. they're, they're all well covered. 
I've got Jeremiah is for the most part done with the back and forth driving because once we get him out there he's gonna have to continue stretching fence getting our animals situated and then taking care of them um, at this point is when I'm starting back and forth driving which I haven't had to do very much of it's primarily been him going making all these trips up until this point and now it's gonna be stuff that I can transport and do so I've got about like 40 50 hours of driving ahead of me in the next month but um, he should be fine. So. <laughs> I should be fine. You're right. You're so, right. so those are the logistics of moving our farm. Obviously, we have a ton of help. This is not just Jeremiah and myself doing this. We are definitely uh, surrounded by community on this one. We have a lot of people going with us, and so that helps. That's what's left. And I don't know how much of that you guys will see. We might reference it, you know, about the trips we're making and stuff, but honestly every time that i try to explain it it makes me want to throw up so i just need to get through it and do it and then we can just let our roots go deep and be south carolinians that's right there we go that's all it takes is that it. little thing just 15 different trips <laughs> three different storage containers full of stuff and so much stuff so those are the logistics um i hope your head to hurt doesn't hurt this bad i hope your head hurts <laughs> I can't even form the sentence. I hope your head does not hurt and that maybe what you'll take from this video is an inspiring new way to make a tomato sandwich. And that felt a lot like a crazy squiggle. <laughs> just saying. So you can do it. You just have to color outside the lines. And here's the thing. Like, this is really hard. We're making a lot of jokes about it. When you have a really big dream, sometimes it requires seasons of great discomfort. And though I will tell you that if you'd asked me two weeks ago, hey, how are you gonna get Con and Bear there? I'd have been like, I don't know yet. Right. Well, that's how a lot of these things have been. There's been a lot of moments where it's been like, I don't know yet. I don't know what we're gonna do about that yet, but we just keep steadily taking the next right step and um, the answers end up kind of presenting themselves and it ends up working out. Um, some of those trips that we're having to like make back and do all that, those are scheduled around appointments that we needed to make here and like loose ends that needed to be tied up. It's all really come together. So as crazy as that feels, we actually feel really good. We feel really glad all the details got handled and I feel really good about it. And we are also emotionally prepared that there may be delays along the road and we are approaching this with some flexibility because those are a lot of logistics to deal with. But we'll figure it out. So that's it. Um, if you made it to the end of all of that, I commend you. Thank you guys for hanging out with us through this process. And though I, I kind of had intended on this vlog, I've had all these like artistic cinematography things that I wanted to do like in our last vlog. But you know, I think we shot a great garden tour that was just genuine and real one on one. And that's really how this all started in the first place. Sounds and good. now I'll sit down and talk to you about the kind of hairy, messy tangle of real life. And from now on, we just to kick, get to kick things off on our new farm. You ready to get to it? I'm ready. We bless you guys. Until next time. <laughs>